Welcome to part six of the lecture on catalytic organometallics. Subject of today are further uh, palladium catalyzed reactions. And uh, well, let us call it profiling palladium. How does the palladium catalyst behave within the catalytic cycle? We have learned a lot about that already with uh, hack type reactions. And we should keep in mind that a palladium 2 intermediate within a, palladia, within a catalytic cycle always is fishing for some kind of electron density. We will see that in a couple of more examples. In a Heck reaction, we have seen that an aryl or vinyl halide reacts with an olefin. As a net result, a CC bond is formed and HX is eliminated well, and bound by the base, which is uh, always present in a Heck reaction. Now, let us assume that we don't have an olefin, but an alkyne. Diphenyl acetylene, also called toline, as the substrate. In that case, a beta hydride elimination can't occur because we don't have beta hydrides present, which is clear. But what will happen in such a reaction? So, 2 to 5 percent of a palladium catalyst, the active species always starts with the palladium in the oxygen station state zero. As usual, the base is present, solvent, normally elevated temperatures, 80 to 100 degrees Celsius, and there might be some additives such as ligands and so on, which uh, trigger the reaction and, uh, well, are there to optimize the reaction conditions. So, for optimized reaction conditions. or what is certainly important for the outcome of such a reaction is the ratio of those two ingredients. Is this in excess or is that in excess? This, sh this should certainly make a difference. So, if we apply those two in the ratio, one to two, under certain reaction conditions. Then we can obtain a naphthalene derivative with four phenyl substituents and uh, Miura, Masahiro Miura at uh, Osaka University have published this type of reaction and reported an 88% yield. The opposite ratio two to one, so an excess of the aryl halide. In that case, it is possible to 
to obtain a phenantrine derivative, phenyl substituted in the positions 9 and 10, 77% yield published by my group about 20 years ago. Again, a 2 to 1 ratio of, well, that is called A and this B. And additional two equivalents of just formic acid, then a completely different outcome will occur. Triphenyl ethene is then the result. A hydrogen is introduced here. This is uh, a result of a group of Sandro Cacci from the university in Roma. 87%. Yield. Let's call that compound E as product, and then we should C here and D there. A ratio of one to four plus one equivalent of styrene will then deliver a triphenyl athene with an additional vinyl substituent. Here we will find again the styrene moiety, so a diene system is formed. This is product F, obtained in 63% yield, again a result by the Miura group. A two to one ratio of A and B plus three equivalents of a phenyl boronic acid, then product G will be isolated. And G is the tetra phenyl athene. Everyone should know an alternative, maybe cheaper way to synthesize that the McMurray reaction of uh, benzophenone. Of course. Nevertheless, interesting to know that this uh, kind of reaction is possible. And, uh, well, 92% reported by Richard LaRocque from Ohio State University. And another more exciting result also was reported by Richard LaRocque's group, well, should have a look what happens with the one-to-one -one ratio 
of uh, our substrates and well sodium acetate as a weaker base weaker compared to potassium carbonate carbonate or th uh, triethyl amine this gives a surprising result This one, again, as I said, reported by La Roque's group, 67% yield. So changing a little bit reaction conditions, adding some, some reagents, and you get a huge palette of different products in uh, optimized and optimized conditions, uh, well, generally with uh, good yields. So, can we mechanistically explain that? Well, indeed, we can. So, first step is clear. The aryl halide reacts with the palladium zero catalyst. Additional ligands are omitted for clarity. An oxidative addition step will take place, and from palladium zero, we then get to the palladium plus two oxidation state. Palladium two, as I said, electrophilic, will react with the electron rich acetylene, the toluene. And this reaction step proceeds analogously to the first, to the uh, corresponding reaction step in the Heck reaction. A carbopalladation in a Zyn fashion will occur. In this special case, you couldn't. Decide, is it a Zyn or a trans addition? But let us assume that we have an additional substituent here. In that case, we would uh, see that it is then located there. Okay. Well, there are also some results that uh, Vinu palladium species are. Uh, able to react uh, easily in its uh, trans uh, isomerization. But generally, at short reaction times, well, it is clear it is a Zyn addition process. So, this vinyl palladium halide will react intermolecularly if some electron-rich reagent is presented. So, for instance, if that styrene is present, then a hectype process will follow carbopalladation and beta hydride elimination and uh, well the product would be product F then. Simple to explain. What is more interesting is uh, to think about well why did was uh, I think Miura apply an excess 
of the uh, coin. Well, the diphenyl acetylene is sterically more hindered compared to the styrene, and therefore, although the alkyne is more electron rich, one can assume that uh, the aryl palladium halide, this one, could somewhat prefer to react with the styrene unless the reaction with the toluene is statistically favored just by an excess of, uh, of uh, toluene present. Okay? So, <coughs> this is then already a sterically more shielded palladium shielded by that large substituent. And therefore, the steric hindrance, the steric influence, is even more present at this stage of a catalytic cycle. And therefore, this then clearly prefers to react with the styrene rather than with another equivalent of a diphenyl acetylene. Okay, so F is produced. If instead the uh, boronic acid is present, well, okay, boronic acid reacts with. The vinyl palladium, well, um, metal metal exchange, it is. Well, this is uh, uh, some kind of uh, so called Suzuki coupling reaction. With a boronic acid and will produce compound G. So with a styrene, compound F. Well, and in case of the formic acid, remember, we have basic reaction conditions. Triethylamine present or potassium carbonate. Of course, the formic acid is deprotonated and therefore, the carboxylate will react with the vinyl palladium halide. So, that means we will get to this type of intermediate a beta hydride elimination in this case will set free CO2 and we have a hydropalladium sitting here at the vinyl position reductive elimination will transfer the proton to this position so, CO2, palladium zero, and its uh, product E. As I said, said, if these are present, we observe, we wouldn't observe the addition of uh, more of a diphenyl acetylene. However, if we have an excess of diphenyl acetylene as in entry one, two equivalents of a diphenyl acetylene, 
and no other special coupling reagents present. Well, okay, then this might react additionally with a diphenylacetylene, or if this reaction is too slow, well, then, as I said, the palladium too is fishing for electron density, and if it can't find intermolecularly, then it will look for electron density, of course, intramolecularly, especially because, well, intermolecular is very often preferred. Well, okay, we have some electron density here, that aromatic ring, this CH bond. The palladium is able, in a somewhat slow reaction, to add to the carbon-hydrogen bond a CH activation can occur not always clear does it work directly or in the sense that the electrophilic palladium reacts in some kind of electrophilic aromatic substitution. So, nevertheless, as you will soon notice, it is some kind of oxidative addition and the palladium changes its oxidation state from plus 2 to plus 4. Let us now eliminate Hx bound or trapped by the base which is always present, then We return to oxidation state plus two. Having that five membered Palada cycle. So and alternatively to the direct carbopalladation of this intermediate to diphenylacetylene, we can assume that this palladium-2 intermediate is able to add to the, to the diphenylacetylene either with this carbon-palladium bond or with this carbon-palladium bond well, the net result, in the net result, it actually doesn't matter. With a carbopalladation, we would get to such a seven-membered palladar cycle and of course, this can then undergo readily a reductive elimination the active palladium zero catalyst is set free and we have a CC bond formation here oh resulting in that tetra naphthalene which we have already called product C. What remains to be explained is the formation of this strange one-to-one -one product as found by Richard LaRocque, 
Well, Richard Laroc applied, as I said, a weaker base. That means that this palladium 4 intermediate is slower deprotonated. The HX is slower trapped. And therefore, a competing reaction has a better chance. A reductive elimination well, could lead us back to this situation or transfer the proton, the hydride, to, to this position. So, let us have a look for the latter case. So, with this intermediate, what do we need to get to the formation of that product? Rather simple. The palladium halide, again, fishing for electron density, will coordinate here after rotating around this uh, carbon-carbon bond. So again, eliminating HX. We get to this intermediary six-membered later cycle, also in this case, a reductive elimination can occur readily and uh, product H then is the result of that, well, you can call that a domino process. Next, I think, an interesting story from something we found, well, about 20 years ago when we worked on, on that subject. Remember, <coughs> we have synthesized diphenyl, phenantrine, from diphenyl acetylene. And we thought, well, what would happen if we put on more steric hindrance here instead of phenyl groups, antrul groups? So let's have a look what happened. For understanding the first reaction, I should explain, briefly explain another palladium catalyzed process. Sonogashira coupling reaction. That is starting with an aryl or vinyl halide offering a terminal acetylene with the acidic acetylenic CH group. Again, palladium zero catalyst, but you need a copper halide as a co-catalyst. Triethylamine. And some air thing for reoxidation. Oh no. No, you don't need that, sorry. <coughs> okay. So what happens is 
the palladium zero will add yeah, oxidative addition as usual to the carbon halide bond. We will get the arrow palladium halide. On the other hand, the base will in equilibrium deprotonate the terminal acetylene and we will form a cuprate, an organoacetylide. One HX is trapped by the base. A transmetallation can occur. Essentially, the copper, the palladium, exchange their ligands or substituents. Well, and now a reductive elimination again sets free the palladium zero catalyst forming the CC bond and we have a double substituted acetylene. So, a co-worker of mine intended to try the Sonogashira coupling reaction with 9-bromoanthracene and as already described in literature with acetylene as gas, reaction conditions as uh, written up there, outlined up there. What should be formed is this bis and trul acetylene. The idea was, well, let's try the palladium catalyzed process of this acetylene with a phenyl halide, two equivalents of that phenyl halide hoping for this interesting structure. So a phenantrine with two anthracene substituents which of course would sterically shield this double bond. They should be situated perpendicular to the uh, <coughs> phenantrine moiety. Well, at least a small amount of product was isolated. But according to the proton NMR, it certainly was not an anthracene moiety because this CC bond has not been formed. So the proton NMR was in accord
with this product. Could there be a mechanistic explanation? Yes, indeed. Because if you, for instance, let just phenyl iodide or yeah, iodobenzene or bromobenzene react uh, under palladium zero catalyzed reaction conditions, you usually get also as a byproduct in reactions where uh, iodobenzene and palladium zero is, is present, this diphenyl, this biphenyl, plus, of course, a palladium two salt which is normally efficiently reduced, for instance, by the solvent if DMF is present. Yeah. Reduced again to palladium zero, and so on. So, no problem to assume that a similar process also could connect the phenyl group of a phenyl iodide and a vinyl palladium halide. No problem. So we thought, okay, maybe some steric influence we haven't completely understood. And then we obtained the mass spec telling us that the mass of our product has 24 units more. So, we have 24 gram per mole as the molecular mass more than anticipated. And now please think about what is the real structure of a product as an exercise. So, 24 mass units. How could we get 24 mass units into the molecule? Well, a sodium and a hydrogen? No. Where should it come from? But two carbons also have 24 mass units. In and, well, if we have 24 mass units more, that means we have two carbon atoms more in the starting material as well as in the product. Because in the second step, we couldn't get by chance two carbon atoms more. It should have been introduced clearly from another equivalent of the acetylene. So, but this means we have to introduce two more carbons in this molecule without changing the molecule too much that we should, uh, we easily could decide by the proton NMR, we have something different. Okay, with a certain C, we should be able to. Yeah? But uh, while you go through the synthesis and at the end, <laughs> you get the certain C spectral. Yeah? So, and also we have to introduce two more carbons to the product to get to the real structure. Yeah? So, the starting material with two more carbon atoms should be this one. A buta diene. Well, to explain that, if you have one acetylene already introduced 
by the Sonogashira coupling reaction, then under the same reaction conditions, almost the same reaction conditions, palladium zero, copper salt, but in the presence of air as an additional oxidant. So, the doctoral student was a bit lazy in excluding air in his experiment. Yeah. Then a so-called Glaser coupling reaction can occur, giving rise to this product. So, adding two more carbons to this structure, well, how could that look? like so now the explanation how do we get from here to there So, also a carbopalladation and now this can I summarize forming a double bond here and the palladium there and conjugated, no, not a accumulated system, not conjugated. So it can be either cis or trans. Therefore, I'm drawing that wave here um, in a buta triene. You have cis and trans in an aline system. You don't have, remember, cis and trans, but you could have chirality. Okay? Please remember that. Yeah, well, and then, similar as I explained it in, uh, in this reaction, and uh, with an additional yodobenzene and an additional reducing step of the intermediate uh, palladium-2 salt. We can get to the final product. Oh, we've already seen that uh, if we let an aryl halide react without additional reagents, coupling reagents, then in a palladium catalysis uh, we often get uh, biphenyl products this is called a Ullmann coupling reaction. Normally it is a copper-induced one, but this type is then a palladium-catalyzed Ullmann coupling reaction. Now to the situation that we have an ortho substituent. Some Ullmann coupling products can occur there, but most interestingly, something else can happen there. Palladium zero 
oxidative addition to a palladium 2 intermediate. And as I said, the palladium is sitting here and, uh, well, fishing for electron density. With those CH bonds, some electron density is in close proximity. Rather slow reaction, but nevertheless, it works. Addition. a CH bond delivers a palladium 4 intermediate and HX trapped by the base. Then leads us to this uh, Palladar cycle, five membered Palladar cycle with the oxidation state of plus two. Again, this is now waiting for some electron density passing by, which could connect to. Yeah. It could be the second equivalent of the starting material a palladium 2 palladar cycle with a palladium 2 center it's proven that it can at an aryl halide. I think we talked about that in uh, context of the chemistry of Alan Canty from uh, Tasmania. But it was never clearly proven to my knowledge that it can also oxidatively add to an aryl halide. But an alternative could be that the second equivalent of an aryl palladium halide intermediate could exchange their substituents in the sense of a disproportionation reaction where one of the palladium twos, this one, becomes a palladium zero and that one a palladium four. So either directly adding to the palladium 2 or this one transfers its substituents clearly we will have such a palladium 4 intermediate And a reductive elimination will form a CC bond, that by a rule bond. So the palladium fishing for electron density, next position which is accessible, well, could be this one or that, if it reacts here, would be a seven-membered Palladar cycle formed. A five-membered Palladar cycle is clearly preferred. So, let's have a look, compare 
this partial structure. We found it here as a parent structure. So why not going through that part of a process a second time, adding another equivalent of the Errol halide, So, and again, the palladium fishing for electron density. So, now it has this or that position it's, as it's symmetrically, it doesn't matter actually. Now the best chance is forming on the elimination of another equivalent of Hx, a seven-membered Lighter cycle. Which then easily eliminates the palladium zero, forming the CC bond. We have that terphenyl, terphenyl system. With this additional bridge, isolated in better 80% yield. A similar process. was tested. Well, just uh, trying, uh, has that oxygen a decisive influence on that CH activation step? Well, OK. If we put in a tertiary butyl group here instead of the methoxy group, what will happen then? Again, a plater cycle. Following this general line and adding another equivalent of the Errol halide. Again, a cyclopalladation. So, in a minor part of this intermediate, as it turned out, follows that complete process with maybe 15% yield, having a tertiary butyl group here, having a tertiary butyl group there, and having a dimethylmethylene group instead of an oxygen there. Yeah. But there is a slight difference to the situation before. With this dimethylmethylene group and with this tertiary butyl phenyl group, 
some steric strain has built up. And well, the steric strain might be minimized if the palladium can leave that molecule. And leaving that molecule is possible by a reductive elimination. Well, we build up from a five-membered Pallader cycle a strained four-membered Carbo cycle. Nevertheless, this additional steric strain is sufficient to cause that uh, reductive elimination under CC bond formation here is the predominant reaction finally giving rise to that benzocyclobutane in, uh, well, better 60% yield. Last reaction for today, and an exercise for you. Barry Martin Trost, this group from Stanford University, uh, published a very nice domino process E should be an ester, actually, ethyl ester. And this malonate unit well, connects two side chains. Well, indeed, starting with uh, malonic acid ester deprotonating and with two nucleophilic uh, substitutions, you can uh, bring two side chains in close proximity and test then, yeah. Um, transition metal catalyzed reactions connecting or inducing a uh, connection between those side chains. This is the general idea. So, with tetrakis, triphenylphosphine, palladium as the catalyst, a 76% yield of a product was obtained. It's now your turn to figure out what do you think was the product. And, uh, well, this is an olefin, not a tertiary butyl group. So, and keep in mind, uh, cyclizations can occur. Baldwin classification, what will be preferred? Well, just give it a try. So, first step, as usual, oxidative addition to the carbon iodide bond, while a vinyl palladium halide. Here, keep in mind, this is uh, cis stereochemistry and it will undergo a carbopalladation of that carbon carbon triple bond. I skip the oxidative addition reaction. So let's count the positions one, two, three, four, five, six. A six membered ring is formed.
there is this double bond, and now an exocyclic double bond is formed from that triple bond. Here you will have the palladium. So let us classify it according to Baldwin. It is a six exo dig cyclization. Six exo dig dig because acetylene and alkyne is a diagonal system. We have digonal centers here. Trig trigonal sp2 hybridized and tet you would have if we have a ring closure reaction at an sp3 hybridized center. Okay? Please look that up. Uh, Baldwin rules. So, what else is now present? Here is the side chain with another acetylene and there that olefinic side chain. Well, okay. Now, in principle, the palladium has the choice. choice. Does it interact with this one, carbopalladation here or carbopalladation there? Well, carbopalladation of that double bond connecting this with that position would be a four axo trick process. Not impossible, but uh, four-membered ring formation is, is a disadvantage. On the other hand, forming a five-membered ring, that would be a five-endotrick process. Five-endotrick generally is, uh, does not occur, according to Baldwin, unless you have as, uh, well, uh, part of uh, that ring uh, sulfur, or a, a bigger atom. Well, you have the palladium there. Yeah. Uh, nevertheless, uh, five endotrick usually doesn't occur. On the other hand, well, let us count one, two, three, four, five, six position, positions again on acetylene. Well, best choice is, of course, a second six exodic cyclization. So, one, two CH2 groups. Again, syn carbopalladation. So, interacting with this olefin is, of course, preferred compared to that. Well, three-membered ring as exotric or four-membered ring as endotric is less feasible than forming again a six-membered ring with a six-exotric cyclization.
there was the palladium. Yes, this should be the intermediate. Now, the carbopalladation of that olefin is a five exotric process. Secondly, a better hydride elimination. will deliver the final product. It's this one, yes. This very special, fascinating reaction became renowned as Barry Trost's Palladium Zipper reaction. And it's clear where the name comes from. Thank you for listening. Next uh, lecture will take place already next Friday. See you again.